Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with the County Board Chair. The chair chairperson is not seated next to me today, but rather across from me. Today, we have the opportunity to interview our new County Board Chairman, Mr. Tom Wagner. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Adam. Tom is not new to county government. He started on the county board in 2008, but I thought we'd take a 30-minute program and learn a little bit more about the chief elected official on the Sheboygan County Board and overseeing Sheboygan County government. Tom, please set the stage for us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what made you decide to run for county board chairman. Well, as, as you said, I've been involved in uh, county government for eight years now, and was on a number of different committees, transportation and law committee, and then eventually finance committee. And finance committee always has a, a broader view. And then for the last four years, I was the vice chairman, which included being uh, on the executive committee. So I, I think it was an opportunity that I thought was really a little bit of my duty, in fact, in all honesty, to, to step up to the plate and uh, take on the chair role. I worked with Roger Testrudy for four years, and Roger was kind enough to involve me in an awful lot of things, so I had a pretty good idea of what, uh, what went on in his role. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, you know, I, I decided to run for the office, and you know, I spent six years before um, in the late 80s and early 90s on uh, the city council in Plymouth and was on their planning commission for a while and was president of what they called their utility commission, the you know, municipal utility. So I've always had an interest in government uh, and been interested in, in serving those types of things. So, yeah. And as you've heard me say at county board meetings before, I've had the pleasure of working with a number of chairs and vice chairs over the years, but I don't think I ever saw a stronger team and collaboration that I saw between you and, and Chairman Distruti. And uh, when you obviously threw your hat in the ring for chair, no one was surprised, and it was a unanimous vote, strong yeah. support. Yeah. So I appreciate that leadership and, and you continuing to be leading the helm here. Prior to being on the county board, and I don't know about your time frame on the uh, Plymouth Common Council, but a little bit about your background. You were a former school principal. Right. I was a, a teacher to begin with in Elkhart Lake, and then I became the elementary principal and served in that role. Uh, which I, I enjoyed both of the roles, and it just happened to work out uh, that I moved into begin, being a principal, and it was a real good move for me. I enjoyed it tremendously. It was a great job. Uh, retired from there, and going to do uh, the county board was going to be part of what I was going to do, which it was. But then I also did a uh, two-year stint at a little uh, small parochial school. It's kind of a part-time principal, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I enjoyed that for two years. And uh, then I said. I'm retired after 35 years in education, but it was a wonderful career and I have nothing but the best memories of, of all those things. And in addition to county board chairperson and leading the county board, the executive committee, uh, you're also real involved with the Wisconsin Counties Association. Please touch on that quickly. I am. Uh, Wisconsin Counties Association is, of course, the umbrella group for all 72 counties and one of the organizations they have is Wisconsin County Mutual Insurance Corporation which 52 counties are members of that, and I'm on their board of directors, and they handle liability insurance in particular. For example, if a, uh, there's an accident with a truck or in the sheriff's department, those are two of the areas where there are more claims than other ones because of the nature of their work, and we handle um, all those claims uh, for 52 counties. I'm also on the Community Insurance Corporation, which is a little kind of a stepchild of that, which handles uh, the same type of things for school districts, uh, cities, and uh, towns. So I handle that. And most recently, I got on the uh, Group Health Trust board, too. So I think I've, I've got enough there, and that's really in health insurance that they provide actually now to our county, too. So much for retirement. Yeah. it's, it's uh, <laughs> My wife's happy, though, because that allows her to do what she enjoys doing. She does a lot of volunteer work, which is great. Well, I know the Wisconsin County Association really tries to tap leaders throughout yeah. the state so we appreciate your involvement with that because that helps us be even better aligned with the county's association which helps makes good things happen for a county government so appreciate that leadership Thank you. let's go back kind of set the stage a little bit for our viewers and give them a sense of what are the roles and responsibilities of being a county board supervisor in 2008 you threw your hat in the ring you wanted to be on the county board 
you know, what are the roles, responsibilities? How does a county board operate? Well, first of all, when I was considering uh, running for this, uh, I was told by people that observed uh, that this was a professional operation and that I would enjoy it. And, and I have to tell you, I think that's really true. And of course, it's not really about enjoyment. And you, hopefully, it's supposed to be about serving. You hopefully are trying to make a difference. That's why you're there. It helps if you enjoy the work you're doing. I think we all work better if we have some enjoyment out of something, and I certainly do. Um, we're a policy-making organization. Uh, we handle the budget. That's our biggest, for any uh, public entity, that's the biggest event of the year. And uh, we have oversight over different things. I think there's a lot of people, including myself, who didn't realize the reach of county government uh, was at 17, 18 departments. Um, you know, we're really an arm of the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we do a number of things uh, because we we need to that they ask us to do or in some instances tell us what to do uh, for example i think the state of wisconsin is one of the few states um, you won't see a, a vehicle plowing the snow that says wisconsin dot on it because we do that for them they compensate us for it but uh, in other states you might see an illinois department of transportation or something like that so uh, it's really a, a, a very collegial relationship with the state and we're dependent on them and they're dependent on us. Yeah, yeah definitely the right arm of the state and yeah. administer a lot of their programs and services and I've heard you share this with some of your peers recently on the board that you know if you are looking to run for the executive committee or ultimately be vice chair or county board chair it's really helpful to get a flavor of the different roles and responsibilities which you pick up as a board member by serving on different standing committees. Uh, how many standing committees are there? And you were on finance, exec, transportation, and law, if memory Correct. serves. Could you give folks a little bit of a flavor for what sure. those committees do? And that is basically half of them. Uh, we have eight yeah. of them. Uh, transportation handles uh, two main areas would be, number one, our airport, which some people wouldn't, I think, always realize that you know, we own the airport and we have responsibilities out there. And then also, you know, our transportation structure, our county roads where you have to maintain and we have to uh, plow not only our county roads but we frequently plow, we, we do plow for the state and then we also plow sometimes for the different townships who contract with us to do that. So there's a, a lot that goes into uh, transportation. The law committee of course, uh, we deal with um, you know the jail over there, the sheriff's department and that entity. Uh, which, which is obviously crucial to uh, um, the safety of our, our constituents. Uh, those are two of the biggest areas I think that they deal with. And finance, obviously a yes. lot of the heavy lifting there and you've been involved with the finance committee for a number of years now and as chair are really a regular participant. Right of those meetings. What generally happens at finance? Well, the finance committee is really, they carry the, the main water. The county administrator yourself presents a budget and, the, and they go over it and meet with all the different departments. Uh, they put together eventually the budget that is submitted to the county board. And uh, they have a lot of meetings starting towards the end of August and September into October because that's our heavy budget time relative to that. Although in all honesty, I kind of joke about it, but it's really not a joke. Uh, I think our budget will be passed this year on uh, November 1st is the date, first Tuesday in November, and uh, the next year's budget starts on November 2nd. But in reality, I think the, the key to, I think, the success that we've had, and I think we've had some success in Sheboygan County, and this predates me, um, is that you can't look at a budget just as one year. You have to realize what is the impact of this going to be two, three, four years down the road as best you can determine it. And by solid planning, you know, you don't want to, you want to avoid things that come up and surprise you as much as possible. There's always going to be things that surprise you in finance because something you couldn't have uh, plan for does occur, but you want to plan for those things that you think may occur. Yeah, and we do have, as you know, a very thoughtful board, a five-year capital mm -hmm. plan, a very collaborative planning budget development process, and I know Chairman Testrudi took pride in it, and I know you do as well, that if you look at the fiscal track record of Sheboygan County in the last 10 years, eight of them during Tom's tenure, uh, on average, every year the property tax levy has gone up less than 1%, less than 1% for the last 10 years. Of course, we saw some reductions right. and some increases that may have been a little more than that, but on average, less than 1% a year. That's a remarkable achievement. Uh, with that said, challenges. 
as you think about some of the key challenges that are facing county government today, what comes to mind? Well, we're still under revenue caps, so um, you know we don't get a lot of new money. Uh, that's and, and, and that forces you, and, and sometimes that's a real good thing. Uh, we've combined departments. We've done a number of things. I, I think most of the low-hanging fruit, if not all of it, is is gone. And and. And I support doing that. And but we have transportation issues. For example, uh, it gets expensive to um, maintain the roads and to build new roads. And if you put off uh, maintaining roads, or you do, you know, one of the processes instead of a better process, because simply you don't have the money down the road, it starts to catch up with you, and you have more expensive roads to to construct. And that's a challenge for us. It's certainly a challenge for the state of Wisconsin. They're probably in a worse situation than we are. And it's certainly a challenge for the federal government, too. And just prior to this interview, as you know, we've been talking about how we're going to address our transportation needs, a lot of focus on that. There's also been a lot of focus on our Health and Human Services Department and helping people with mental illness yes. as well as drug abuse. Any? Yeah, I'm happy to see that uh, one of the things that I've been a, a big supporter of this, encouraging the people along the lines uh, relative to the drug court that we're going to be starting. Right. Uh, Health and Human Services, Tom Hagebrecht, the director over there, will be a main player there. The Sheriff's Department will be involved as, uh, I believe it's Judge Stengel who is going to yep. Yep. Uh, be doing that, the District Attorney's Office. And it's not about, the drug court is not about um, letting people off. It's really about finding a, uh, a better consequence and treatment that keeps them from coming back. And there's been some other counties who've had a lot of success uh, with the drug courts, so uh, we're, no sense to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we've looked at some of those, and it saves in human costs, which is really important, but it also can save money for the county, right. and, and that's a win-win, so I'm really pleased to see that happening. Yeah, well said. Well said. So challenges, transportation, maintaining critical programs and services, whether it's health and human services or law enforcement, but then let's turn our attention a little bit more to uh, key accomplishments. I, I, we briefly touched on the fiscal track record that I think you and I and the board as a whole takes pride in, but what are some other accomplishments you've been a part of the last eight years that come to mind? Sure. Well, we dredged the uh, Sheboygan River. We were involved with that. That was a huge one. I think the purchase of Amsterdam Dunes, that was a unanimous uh, vote, I believe, of the county board, and we purchased that for $4.1 million. We received, I think it's $2.4 million in stewardship funds. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have, I believe it's three lots out there that we can sell along Lake Michigan. We have um, also some uh, lots that we can do for wetland mitigation, right. which would be helpful. So I'm really, that was really a, a very positive thing. And I think just the, the idea of um, combining some of the departments that we've combined over the last uh, number of years. I think it makes it for a more efficient operation. And the whole thing is about service to the taxpayers. That's what we're about. Yeah, it wasn't too much more than a decade ago. We had 1,350 employees. Now we have closer to 825. So a lot of consolidation, a lot of streamlining. And when you say that to people, I know I was out just a week ago at, at an event in Plymouth, and when you tell people that there's 800 employees in Sheboygan County and you start going through a little bit of the list of what we are involved in, many people are surprised by that. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes on in county government and um, it's there. The county board didn't have any competition. This year, we didn't have any new board members, which is, I don't believe, ever happened before. I think it reflects a couple of things. One, a good, solid team, thoughtful decision makers that the public supports. And also, you just don't see a lot of people step up and, and run for county board or elected offices, right. in part maybe because they don't see the, the, uh, the value and the opportunity to really service above self and the satisfaction that goes with that. But as you think about your transition, what's changed from being one of the 25 county board supervisors to now being the county board chairperson? Well, you certainly, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think I had a broader view even when I was a supervisor, but you can't help but have a even a bigger view when you're the county board chairman. Your job is to, it's a little bit like an orchestra conductor. Uh, you've got 24 other members of the, of the orchestra, and it works best if people are playing along 
with the same music. That does not mean that they can't disagree and should disagree because out of disagreement sometimes comes a better solution. Uh, but I think we pride ourselves on civility and having disagreements uh, appropriately so, and then after the decision is made, you move on. Mm -hmm. And um, anything I've ever done in my life, once a decision's made and you're moving, it's best just to move on, and then you deal with the next situation that comes up. But you know, we have a wonderful group, a wonderful board, as I think you you were mentioning. Uh, they're good people. Uh, they run really because they are interested in serving, and and you can see that. And uh, Glad to have them all back. Yeah, yeah, I am too. What's your read? What's your thoughts on why you think more people don't run for office, whether it's county board or Plymouth Common Council? You know, I think um, you know time is certainly a factor. Um, even though we're local politicians and nonpartisan, local elected office, and, and not wild about the term politician, but in all honesty, we are if we're elected. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of a negative. Um, impact of that on people and and also I think uh, you know you putting your name on a ballot is an interesting event because you know you really don't know there aren't a whole lot of polls ahead of time on something like this saying you know and um, you know you could <laughs> you could be embarrassed or whatever else and I think uh, but I think time is really the biggest one why people um, probably don't run you know with our society today everything's pretty busy and I think that also is really why younger people, it's hard for them when they're balancing family and work and, and so many things. Yeah, yeah. So when you become a, an elected county board supervisor, you're not just thrown into the fire, although it may feel like that right. sometimes. There is some orientation, there's some opportunity for growth. How does the, the county help a supervisor be successful? There is some training for the, for the county through the county, and that's important. And uh, then also you can receive some additional training through some workshops through the Wisconsin Counties Association. And I think that's helpful. I always advise new members, and I like to think this is what I did, you listen more than you speak and you uh, learn more than you teach. And um, after a while you develop a relationship uh, with the people and you gain knowledge. Uh, and that's helpful in helping to solve problems. Uh, and you know, we really are a strong committee structure in the county. We use our, our committees heavily. That's where a lot of the uh, challenges and difficulties are vetted. Still is on the county board floor. It's still up for debate. Uh, but frequently, by the time it gets to the county board floor, it's not that it's so programmed. I could see somebody possibly thinking that. It's basically that the uh, issues have been flushed out and the problems have been flushed out at the committee level. And by the time most of those resolutions and ordinances get to the county board floor, they, they've gone through their process. I think you raised an excellent point. Uh, obviously, we've had the TV8 following our county board meetings for a number of years now, and we appreciate that. And so many of the decisions are uh, actions taken with not a lot of discussion right. or strong votes. And just as you said, a lot of that heavy lifting and discussion and debate happened at the committee level. And every resolution and ordinance is referred to two committees. So one committee introduces it, they discuss it, it goes to the board, goes back to another committee, comes back. It's really been an effective process for us. Absolutely. And I would point out to you, when we purchased Amsterdam Dunes, $4.1 million purchase, which is a big deal and should be a big deal. Uh, watching that, you could have said there weren't a whole lot of comments on that, but it was simply the fact that the information had gone through those two committees. Also, any of the supervisors, they were given a tour of the site. They were given the information I believe they needed. So by the time it got to that point, they were ready to go with their vote. Yep, yep. Another uh, tactic that we've used, and you're going to be leading the charge on, uh, perhaps at the same time this program is going to be shown throughout the community, is our annual county board leadership forum. Right. What's that all about? Right. Um, basically, that is where we get together as a uh, county board, and we do more listening than anything else, where there's um, all sorts of uh, different department heads who will present all sorts of issues to us, and, and not only the immediate issue, which we're usually pretty well versed on already, but also what are the projections down the road, or what do we see you know, three years down the road or five years down the road? Where are we going? So I really think it's a little bit of a vision thing. It uh, creates a little bit of a vision, because if you have a vision, then that part that you might have a question about makes more sense 
when you see it with the whole package. And we'll bring in maybe somebody from the outside too. I know uh, we brought in John Hokemer a number of years from the Wisconsin Counties yeah. Association right. to make a presentation. And it's always helpful sometimes to get somebody from the outside to give you a fresh look at something. You're not an expert unless you come, what, no. 50 or 100 miles from out of town, <laughs> That's right? right. <laughs> and I think this is going to be our 17th annual County Board Leadership Forum. And personally, where I have found it so valuable is when the chair or the finance committee, the executive committee, gives me direction on the budget. And mm -hmm. this is the goal right. that we want our county administrator to strive to achieve for the board. And then we have discussion, as you said, at the leadership forum about our fiscal outlook and challenges. It just has helped our budget process be so much smoother. I think it's been one of the secrets to our success. Absolutely, without question. And, and that's, that plays a role in that, along with the finance committee and really the department heads too. It's a, it's a team, team effort, without question. Uh, because it, there's a lot of complexity to it. And it's, as I said, the most important document we do all year. Another issue that uh, you and I certainly have heard a lot about over the years, and I think we've made some progress, but there's always room for improvement, shared services. Right. What, what do you hear from your constituents? What do you see are, are some good things that Sheboygan County has done to uh, be more efficient and share services with other local units of government? Well, I think generally taxpayers think that whenever possible, all the units of government should share a service whenever possible and not duplicate anything and that um, they don't want the silos and they certainly relative they're paying taxes to both entities in many instances or and uh, why can't certain things be shared uh, we for a number of years we've shared Bernie Rahmer uh, in purchasing you know he does a great job for us and I know he, I'm sure he does a great job for the city because everything I've ever heard they're, they're, they're pleased as punch to have them and then there's some economy of size there and when you're doing that yeah, I'm sure he picks up something well he might not have had if he was just at the county so I'm sure he brings value back to us on top of that but yeah, anytime we can do that is is really important as you know, as your, your role on the Transportation Committee years ago, we our highway department works with all the other municipalities, or not all of them, but many of them, right. predominantly the towns, in providing services, and that's a shared service. We gain efficiencies there. And then a more recent one that you had a chance to vote on, and there were some mixed feelings about it, but our consolidated emergency dispatch service. What's, right. What's in play there? Right. I think that had been going on for, I heard, anywhere from 20 to 30 or 40 <laughs> a lot years. Of discussion. And basically what it came down to is the, um, the city of Sheboygan had their own dispatch center for the police department and the rest was in the was with the county, so there are two dispatch centers, and that at some point is a duplication of service. Uh, the other thing was with cell phones today, if you happen to be in the city of Sheboygan, it would first go kick out to the county and then have to go back to the city. Well, we all know in certain emergencies, even a minute or a minute and a half can matter. And uh, the city of Sheboygan was interested in, in getting out of it, and uh, I think in the long run it's going to be best for everybody in the county. It's the right way to go. There are some counties who have within their, their jurisdiction four or five of them, and uh, I don't think that in the end is what taxpayers want. I think we'll have a more efficient system and a better system uh, the way we've, we've gone. It. Yeah, I know Ozaki County, Tom Moe, the administrator there, has shared with me his frustration. I think they have five I think they different do. dispatch centers there, and it's very parochial, and no one wants to give it up. And for the county board, it was a tough decision for Supervisor Wagner and others to make because it actually didn't save money. There was more cost to the county to provide the service. We shifted the cost from the city to the right. county, so we absorbed that. We didn't save any money from a county perspective doing it, but from a standpoint of service delivery, efficiency, and treating all of our taxpayers the same with an equal service regardless of where you call from, uh, it, it was the right thing to do. Yeah, I think in the end, um, that is one of those votes. There's m most of the votes, in all honesty, that you take on the county board floor are fairly routine like any uh, governmental body. It's you know it, it's pretty clear, and that's why you have a 25 to 0 on some of those. But there are certain votes that are more challenging and, and deserve uh, even more time and that would have been one of them and that was an interesting debate as it should have been but I think in the end it really comes down to for me what I thought was the right thing to do and in the end hopefully you know you're elected to do what you think is right yeah yeah so you've got a 
a broader perspective than some board members and certainly some people in the community because of your work on the Wisconsin Counties Association and interacting mm -hmm. with county board chairs and other supervisors from across the state. What's been your perspective? How is Sheboygan County operating? How do we compare and contrast to the 71 other counties? Yeah, it appears from what I can tell, and I do get a chance to talk to a lot of county board chairs uh, through my role with the Wisconsin Counties Association. And frankly, that's a real opportunity that I use because sometimes if we have, if there's something that's coming up here, there's somebody else that I know that I can, that I've known now for a number of years that went through the same thing maybe two years ago or something like that. So they can give me their point of view having gone through it. And sometimes it's not always so much they'll tell me what we should do. They'll tell me, well, don't do that. And, and that's always helpful. But no, we're, we're well respected uh, within uh, the county family, if you want to call it that. Uh, and uh, I know people call us and uh, for our thoughts on certain issues and what is Sheboygan County doing. And uh, I take great pride in that uh, because I always know when I'm at these places, you always represent yourself, but you're also representing uh, your entity, which in this case is Sheboygan County. And I'm proud to represent Sheboygan County when I travel the state. Yeah. Well, I'm proud to work for you. That just about concludes our program. Any other comments or anything else you wanted to share, Tom, that we didn't get a chance? Not really. I'm I'm fine. Okay. Well, great. Excellent interview. Excellent overview. And Tom mentioned just a couple of minutes ago that transportation is one of those key challenges that we're striving to address. And it's not just Sheboygan County. It's all local units of government throughout Sheboygan County across the state. And it is one that is building. And to the credit of a number of our board members under Chairman Wagner's leadership. We're looking to solve this problem. Next month, our transportation director, Greg Schnell, will be here. He's doing an excellent job as our transportation director. A lot going on, not only with maintaining our roads and infrastructure, but we're looking to build a new transportation complex in Plymouth, which is consolidating three facilities into one. Long term, a real investment in our community. So. Until then, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or you want to learn any more about our fearless elected leader, Chairman Wagner, please don't hesitate to contact our office, 459-3103, 459-3103. We have a new assistant working for us, Elaine Bosman, just started this week, and she replaced Kay Lorenz, who had been the chair and my assistant for the last nine years, and a very, very good one. So we're going to miss Kay. But we welcome Elaine and we thank you for joining us. We'll see you next month.